There's a new premier in Alberta. I guess she's been premier for... Uh, she she was chosen by the party, and that was validated by the voters just a month ago. I'm talking about Danielle Smith. I had a sit-down with her about a week or two ago, and uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Uh, she has a, an unusual blend of libertarian ideas and conservative ideas and Western ideas, and I think she brainstorms sort of out loud, and that has gotten her in some trouble before, but no trouble that the voters didn't forgive one of her ways she secured the leadership was through her innovation of the Sovereignty Act, which is like Harper's Firewall. Quebec really talked about the sovereignty. It talks about the Sovereignty Act in their own way all the time. Mm -hmm. You treat that in the documentary as well. Let's play one last clip from your film, Fractured Nation. This is how you address Danielle Smith's Sovereignty Act. Let's take a look. Now, we have been made aware that in the coming weeks, Justin Trudeau is planning on bringing forward new restrictions on electricity generation from natural gas that will not only massively increase your power bills, but will also endanger the integrity and reliability of our entire power grid. And as Premier, I cannot, under any circumstances, allow these contemplated federal policies to be inflicted upon Albertans. I simply can't, and I won't. This is not a road we can afford to go down. If he persists, he will be hurting Canadians from coast to coast, and he will strain the patience and goodwill of Albertans in an unprecedented fashion. Newly elected Premier of Alberta, Danielle Smith, has introduced legislation in the spirit of Stephen Harper's original firewall letter. Smith's law will put in place protections to shield Alberta from federal policies that violate provincial jurisdiction and infringe on Alberta's constitutional rights, while looking to expand Alberta's power and autonomy by potentially taking actions in the footsteps of those already taken by the province of Quebec something that Justin Trudeau isn't too happy about. Obviously we're going to look at this very, very closely and think about the implications, but our focus remains on making sure that Albertans uh, are part of a growing, cleaner economy and protect our environment for years to come. The Sovereignty Act was meant to send a message to Albertans that we're going to defend ourselves. Danielle's legislation, the UCP legislation, is taking together all of the rights that Quebec already has. And Quebec uses them as a shield, and Danielle has tried to hammer those same materials into a sword. Certainly it was a signal to the rest of the country that Albertans are still not happy with the equalization program, and things need to change. Inspired by Alberta's Sovereignty Act, Saskatchewan has now passed sovereignty legislation of their own. Something that could maybe be the start of a trend of provinces finally standing up to the federal government. I see you made reference to the Saskatchewan First Act. You know, uh, Scott Moe, the Premier of Saskatchewan, is pretty solid on these issues too. He doesn't uh, act as a lightning rod in the same way. I think the media hate Danielle Smith and they've sort of given up trying to dislodge Scott Moe. Um, I think the Sovereignty Act was attacked by a all sorts of people who are completely fine with it from Quebec. They just don't like to see Alberta getting uppity. I mean, I think it's it's hard to it's it's hard to argue against that point because Alberta or sorry, Quebec has been, you know, using these different levers. Basically all the sovereignty act is is Daniel Smith coming out and saying we're gonna use every tool in our toolbox to oppose uh, federal overreach and federal uh, uh, intervention in areas of provincial responsibility. And I mean, that's something that Quebec has already been doing quite uh, overtly for uh, decades, quite frankly. So I think that um, everything in the Sovereignty Act is, is not only above board, but is something that other provinces should take note of. It's something that obviously Saskatchewan is now following suit with. And uh, because quite frankly, the, 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 Justin Trudeau, I think, has two two things that's going on with this government right now. Number one, he has a proclivity to centralize power, to control power in Ottawa, whether that's um, by infringing on provincial jurisdiction with Bill C-69 or the carbon tax mandate, or whether that's Bill C-11 and trying to clamp down on free speech. It's that proclivity to try to exercise control over the population, 
And on top of that, the other thing is he clearly has a an, an inherent dislike for the West and Alberta specifically that uh, he inherited from his father. Mm -hmm. And those two things combined have led to a series of policies that are you, impossible to interpret as anything other than anti-Western yeah. or anti-Albertan. And um, the provincial government uh, needs to use all of its power to uh, to stand up to that. And I think good on Danielle for doing that. I know there's some you know, uh, these attempts to regulate natural gas production or natural gas electricity generation is the next thing in the pipeline. And uh, Daniel's been talking about that, and hopefully she's able to stand up to that. The only thing that concerns me is what we just chatted about, which is that Harper did not use his opportunity to appoint, uh, you know, principled um, uh, Supreme Court judges that would interpret the Constitution the way that it was written. And that worries me. Yeah. Uh, it worries me in a whole series of judgments that have been made over the last half decade. And um, so we'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm.